listening to the Mark and Russia podcast, broadcasting from the belly of the bear in Chelyabinsk, Russia. Kick back and enjoy the show. Don't be a pussy. In three, two, one. Hi, this is Mark of the Mark and Russia podcast. And what follows this short audio bite is my review of Hindenburg Journalist audio editing software. Well, actually, it's not really a review, but more of a down and dirty demo. I do want you to know that the audio you'll hear will not be from Hindenburg because I was narrating the podcast as I was using Camtasia Studio to capture my Hindenburg screen. I use Camtasia Studio for my narration, and although it's a great screen capture software, it's not as good at audio editing. Well, here we go. When I'm telling people about the equipment that I use to do my podcast, that list wouldn't be complete without speaking about my audio editor. The audio editor that I use is called Hindenburg Journalist, and it's just a fantastic audio editor made especially for podcasters and journalists. There are a lot of great editors out there, and when I think of free ones, particularly Audacity is a great editor, great open source project, but it's geared much more towards musicians such as all of the other ones are. This is designed by journalists for journalists, aka podcasters, and it's, has, it's so feature rich for the use for these uses, and it does not have all the, let's make MIDI music and everything else that the other ones have. So it, the learning curve is not as steep, but the output is much better, I feel, and much more intuitive than you'll get with the other programs. Now in this situation, this is not going to be a, a how-to of how to use this program. I'm just going to illustrate how I put together an intro, just to show you how easy and intuitive it really is. So let's just watch it how that happens okay so well the first thing that we need to do is we need to to add the the clips that I'm going to use in my case I'm going to use four different clips so I add one and now I just repeat that step four times to add four the clipboard are Files I'm going to use now. Favorites are files that they don't ever go away. They're always there because I may use them like intros and outros and everything for my other podcasts. So first I'm going to take one of them, which is the like the opening song in this particular intro that I'm making. I'm going to take it and just simply click it and drag it into place down here. It really doesn't matter which place I put it. Look at that. Look at that, it's an auto loudness adjustment, which is correct a good, good, by far the largest percentage of the time. Uh, it saves time, it's a very intuitive program, as I mentioned. So I'm going to next, I'm going to grab, I had a professional voiceover person do part of my intro, so I'm going to grab that file. i put it roughly into place. It's not going to be exact because I have to line things up here. That's what I'm going to show you now. Now, unfortunately, you cannot hear this, but I will play the pretty much finished result for you. So, normally you would hear, if you were operating, you would hear it now, and you would get an idea where you wanted the speaking to start in the music. So, you can see I'm playing it, I'm playing it, it's not in the right place now, but I'm saying right here is where I want it to start. So, I'm, I can just click on it, move that file back up to the line, the playhead, and down below it's just kind of a visual thing where I know where I, even if it wasn't listening by ear, it's visual, I know where I want the uh, voiceover artist to start. So, I've done that. now. Now I'm going to move another file where I did some speaking. I'm going to move that into place next to where the voiceover artist's uh, file is. Let's do that now. Again, just click it, drag it. I'm not going to put it right next to it. Let's watch again. You can see that auto adjust. The peaks of the voiceover artist and the peaks of my voice are right about the same. It's done that automatically. So, as I said, very intuitive, great program. 
I leave a little space between the two, though, because I, I don't want it to go right from him speaking right to me speaking. I want a little short break, maybe second, second and a half. So now I, I only want this song I loaded in place while the voiceover artist is prior to him speaking and during the time he's speaking. I don't want it while I'm speaking. So I'm going to move, kind of cut that song, put it where I wanted to have it. It's, I can just, well, first let me mark it with the playhead where I want it to end. I want it to end where the voiceover artist ends. Well, I just click on it and move it. And it deletes all of that ahead of that behind the line. Now here, you can see in the, the corner has a little block on it. I want to have that thing fade out so I can grab that block and just pull it over. Kind of taper it out so it's a fade out. I, again, I don't want the music to just abruptly end. I want it to slowly fade out. So now I'm going to take, I have different background music that will be playing when I'm speaking. So I'm going to drag that and put it down next to that. Other song, you can see the auto would just happen, happening. But when I'm speaking, I, it's, it's got to be very, very much background. So I'm going to make one adjustment here and I'll have to adjust it again. So in this case, the auto just did not get it right. I'm going to have this one fade in, whereas the other one was fading out. And I also want the two to overlap a little bit so that as the second song is, the second music is starting, the other one is ending, so we don't have any kind of a, a blank spot in between. So I'm actually overlapping them, as you can see in this close-up right here. The two songs overlap a little bit. Under normal circumstances, I would now take it and I would play it and see how the sound was. So. That's what I'm showing you. I'll try to speed it up by um, different functions we have here. I'll go over that in some other later tutorial. So the background music for my voice is still a little bit low. So you just highlight the element you want to change. Click, it's yellow. And I just pull down. Now I have it where I want it to be. The, the sound is the correct volume. Uh, is background music behind my voice as I'm as I'm listening to now but you can't listen to but you'll hear it all in just a short while okay I think that that's pretty good so I want to take what I have now and I want to save it but I when I say save it I don't mean save it in its final form as in a WAV file or an mp3 I want to save it as a project file, which will mean I can click on that project file anytime and all these little clippets will load themselves just the way they are now so I can make individual tweaks and make very minor changes should I desire. So you don't do save, I, okay yes you do do save, excuse me, because I'm saving it as a project file. You don't do save for an mp3 or wave, and I'll go over that in a little bit. So it's a Hindenburg file, I just give it a name and I'm just going to give it a location and save the file. Okay, that's all saved. Anytime in the future I can pull up exactly what I see right here. Now here I just want to try something, show not try something, but show you something else that the program does, which it means to group it. So now you can see this is four different elements which can, which can be moved individually. But I have them right where I want them. So I'm going to control click each one Okay, so all four are yellow. Now I can group them so that they move together by going Control G. This way, because it's the way I want, this way if I move one, all four elements will move with each other, as you can see here. Now they're all moving as a group. So Control G is the keyboard shortcut, but it, it's it's not the only way. Okay, you can also go just right click and here I'm going to ungroup it so now they could be moved into independently of one another but I can click and I can group again so we can go there by keyboard shortcut or by right clicking okay, now I'm going to make it into a WAV file and here we use export for WAV or MP3 not save we use export I'm using WAVE because it's non-compressed format. MP3 is compressed. 
I haven't used this intro yet in my podcast, and I want the best possible quality. When I'm all done with the podcast, I will create an MP3 file of the entire thing just for size, but you lose some quality when you compress. So here I just find out where I want to keep it, what folder. So what I'm doing now, I should head to the folder there before I started recording. But anyhow, you'll notice down here it says stereo and it gives the file size. I don't need stereo. And with podcasting, you do not. It's a mono file. So change this to mono from stereo to mono. And at the same time, the file size will decrease by half. Now I can save this file. File save. And I think we can go ahead and we can bring it to a point where we can, uh, you can listen to not the finished product, but almost the finished product. So I'm going to close this down or, or minimize it. I'm going to find the file, open it up in just my an audio player, in this case Windows player, and now we can listen to it. Uh, good evening, people of podcast land. This is President Iraq Obama, and when I'm in Russia, not busy pressing the reset button, I like to listen to the Mark in Russia podcast. Uh, I learn more from this podcast than I do from my own advisors. Besides, uh, he's a good diplomat, perhaps better than Hillary. So, uh, rather than listening to the same old TV programs, it's time for change. You can believe it. Listen to the Mark in Russia podcast. Mark, you're the man. Wow, that was quite a surprise. Okay, well there you, you, you've you heard the recording more or less. Uh, not the entire thing, but let's go back to the program. I'm going to first take this and save it again because we did change the thing. I forgot to group them uh, before when I changed it. I'm going to save it because I'm going to clear away this desktop thing again. Because now we, we've created our, our intro, so let's now down below I'm going to pull the intro into my favorites and that's where it'll stay from now on. Okay, so it's always there if I want to use this particular intro for another podcast. I can just take it and I can move it over. In this particular case, there, there's a, a little problem with it. I actually do have to trim a piece of it off in order to utilize it later on. And that's because after I'm done speaking, the background music continues to play. I have to cut that off, all right, because I might want different background music after that. But I would just cut that off and then resave the file. And then I have this intro whenever I need to use it for a, a future podcast. Well, anyhow, that's, that's really what's involved with uh, making this you know, using this program to use an intro, I, it wasn't a very complete lesson, just a basic idea. And you know, the main idea is to show you the audio editing software that I like to use, which is Hindenburg Journalist. It's a fantastic program. Get it. Thanks a lot for listening all the way to the end of this podcast. I hope that you came out of it with the feeling that this software has something good to offer you, as it has me. This review is also posted on the markinrussia.com website where you'll find much better show notes and also some important links. Go to the site. I'm also going to try to get someone from Hindenburg to agree to an interview with me at a future date and I do hope that this happens and that I can offer this to my listeners. Well, until my next podcast, thank you and goodbye.